Downing Street apologises to Buckingham Palace after two parties were held at number 10 the night before the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. A spokesman for the Prime Minister said it was deeply regrettable that parties were held at a time of national mourning. The Foreign Secretary gave her reaction. When I heard about this, I was, of course, very, very concerned. And I understand that people across the country are angry uh, about what, what has happened. We will have the very latest on all these developments from Westminster, also this lunchtime. Novak Djokovic's Australian visa is cancelled for a second time, three days before the start of the Australian Tennis Open. Andy Murray says the row is bad for the sport. It just seems like it's dragged on for quite a long time now and yeah, not great for the, for the tennis, not great for the Australian Open, not great for Novak. The Welsh government says coronavirus restrictions will be eased in the coming weeks, although caution is still needed. The parliamentary committee that took evidence from cricketer Azim Rafiq says public funding for the sport should be limited until there's progress on eliminating racism. And Virginia Dufre, who's bringing a civil case against Prince Andrew for sexual assault, says she wants to show that the rich and powerful aren't above the law. Coming up in sport later in the hour on the BBC News Channel, England's cricketers are looking to sign off from the ashes on a high, but despite a strong start, Australia fight back in Hobart. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the BBC News at One. Downing Street has apologised to Buckingham Palace following revelations that two parties were held at number 10 the night before the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral. A spokesman for Boris Johnson said it was deeply regrettable that the events took place at a time of national mourning. Covid rules at the time banned indoor mixing, but reports suggest there was drinking and dancing until the early hours. The Prime Minister wasn't at the parties, but the latest disclosures, which the Daily Telegraph reported, have amplified calls for his resignation. Our political correspondent Nick Erdley has the latest. <laughs> 